When it comes to creating content of your dogs, you want to make sure you're looking for environments that are going to be visually and aesthetically appealing. There are three things that I will always stop to take photos and videos of my dogs in when it comes to environments. The first is going to be foggy environments. Whenever there is fog outside, I get my dogs out there and we get those pictures. I love fog because it is a beautiful blanket of a blank canvas behind them. You're not going to see the fog up close in most cases. You're going to see it in the background. So it's going to kind of mute everything in the background and really make your dog pop. No matter if they are a darker dog or a lighter dog, they're going to look really good against fog. There's a little bit of tweaking you can do to brighten things and to enhance some of that fog to really make them pop in their images and in their videos. But fog is going to be really, really good because it is that blank canvas, because it is going to have a beautifully diffused light. So the light is going to come through the fog and you are going to have just this beautiful flat light that is going to just remove the shadows and the harsh lines and all the things. It's going to give you what I feel is the best possible light to be working with because that misty fog diffuses the sun and just everything glows. Everything just looks so beautiful with fog. So I will always stop and I will always create fog content on my dogs and because it's something that is a little less common, we don't see it all the time, it's going to stand out and look really striking on your social media when you're sending it to your friends and family. Even when you're printing it out as canvases and metals and prints for the walls of your house, fog is going to be really, really nice to focus in on the focal point, your dog. And so I love working with fog. I highly recommend working with fog, but we also want to make sure that we're getting some more of the elements in there. I will also always stop when I see water. And this can be a lake, a pond, a river, a pool, an ocean. If there's water, it's going to look good with your dogs. Now, sometimes you have to work with angles a little bit, especially if it's something like a pool. You're going to have to work with your angles to get those beautiful colors behind your dog, especially if they're not swimmers. But you want to make sure you're paying attention to where this is going. So with the fog, it kind of mutes everything down. It draws everything in. And it places the focal point on your dog. With water, you've got a lot going on. So you're going to look for leading lines, which is where things are going to be moving to kind of guide the eye toward your dog. You're going to be looking to make sure you have the reflections of water, um, the light hitting off of the water. If it's a river, you're going to want to get as much of that in as possible. So you might have to shoot at different angles for this. So you want to make sure that you're looking around, you're seeing what's in the background, what's around you, and what good angles you're going to be able to get up your dog. But I will always stop for water because water is reflective. It picks up light, it makes things pop, and it has leading lines. It doesn't matter if you were working with a pond or a river or the ocean or a pool. There are leading lines when it comes to water. And it's going to be really, really helpful for getting just gorgeous, gorgeous content out of your dogs. Now, another thing that I always stop to take photos of is sunrises and sunsets. Beautiful golden colors, pink purple colors, even hints of blue. I even go for like big bold skies. So consider that one a bonus. If you have like stormy skies, gray clouds, big things, big blue sky, big blue skies with white clouds, elite. It is elite. And so I will go out at sunrise. I will go out at sunset and I will make sure that I am putting that light behind my dogs. When I put the light behind my dogs, I am then able to illuminate them. It usually wraps them in this golden glow and I get just very pretty, pretty images, very clear, very crisp. If you bump up the contrast on those images, you're going to get just the most striking, most thought provoking, most beautiful photos that you can get of your dog. Having that light behind them, really, really helpful. Now, unlike with humans, you can actually put the sun behind you so that it is on their faces. It is not going to create the shadows on dog faces the way that it does on human faces. So for the most part, if you're taking photos of yourself and if you're taking photos of yourself and your dog, you don't want to be squinting, looking into the sun as it slams you right in the face. That usually doesn't lead to the best picture. So having that light to the side or especially behind you works really, really well. And if you have it, so the sun is peeking out behind the corner of their head, you are going to have a different look than if it's right behind their head. If you put it behind them, so you're positioning their bodies to block it, you are going to have bright, crisp colors and a really pretty outline. If you have it off to the side, you're going to get that golden wash right in front of them with all of the flare and the sparkles and all of the things. And so you can work the sun at different angles to get different looks within seconds. So you're going to want to practice a little bit on this one. And then you want to make sure for all of these, you're down low get as low as possible unless the water source is really low and then you might need to get high but for fog and for sun and for clouds and things get down low and shoot up toward the sky 
it will give you kind of a superhero look to your dog if you're shooting upward and if you're shooting pictures or video with yourself make sure it's on eye level whenever possible because that can distort and warp you a little bit if the camera source is too low for a human body but it looks real good on dogs and then you can get that big beautiful sky or the fog or the sun or the whatever around you as you're creating your images with water again depending on the water source you may need to shoot down to get that so just be mindful of your angles and then create as much content as possible so that you have a lot of options when it comes to this if you know you're going somewhere with one of these things come prepared if you are finding it in the moment and you can go back later on, try doing that. If you know it's something that you want to work on, just practice those skills. Work on honing your abilities with this one. And you can create really cool videos and photos with the environments around you. Now, this is not all you can do. There's lots of things besides the sunrise and sunsets and water and fog and big bold skies. If you want to talk about this, go ahead and let us know. But I have an entire playlist on taking better photos and videos and content of your dogs, whether you're an influencer or you're just doing it to document your dog's life. So make sure you check out that playlist. Drop your questions down below. I'm a longtime professional photographer, so I'm here to answer your questions and make things accessible to you, even if you don't have technical skills or high-end technology to take these photos and videos with. And we'll see in the upcoming episodes as we continue to help you navigate the world of dog parenthood to give your dog the best life possible. We'll see you then.